Me llamo Tommy G, estoy en Chicago con los venezuelanos. Sesenta y tres veinte, University. Wey, wey. Venezuela. You're talking to people, getting their stories. Enjoy this journey. To understand Chicago's migrant crisis, let's first start by covering what has been going on in the country responsible for most of the migrants, Venezuela. For years, Venezuela has been suffering from hyperinflation. It began in the 1980s with double-digit inflation, and in 2019, the Central Bank of Venezuela estimates that inflation reached over 53 million percent. Among the list of reasons of why this has happened is rampant government corruption and extreme amounts of money printing. This has resulted in massive shortages of food, medicine, and access to electricity. So. In order to survive, millions of Venezuelans have resorted to fleeing to other countries for a chance at a better life. Places like Colombia, Panama, Peru, and the United States. To get to the United States, migrants have to brave the Darien Gap, where they not only have to contend with snake bites and drowning, but also armed paramilitary groups that prey on migrants. Then they have to pass through the Panamanian jungle on foot and have to survive going through Mexico, where they may be robbed and beaten by both Mexican police and cartel affiliates. And finally, they make it to the US. And in places like Texas, government officials have decided to bus migrants to sanctuary cities like New York and Chicago to deal with the issue. Today, we go into the migrant camps, speak to the people, and speak to local residents on how the crisis is affecting their life. Let's begin. So we're downtown Chicago. This is the nice, fancy area of the downtown. But hidden in plain sight is actually the hotel that's hosting the most migrants across the whole city. There are about 1,500 migrants in the inn of Chicago. And that's gonna be our first stop of the day to investigate this story and see what the hell is going on with this migrant crisis that's hitting the country. This is something that a lot of American cities are gonna to have to contend with. Chicago and New York are in emergency situations. Their budgets are going crazy. They're gonna be heavily in debt because of this crisis. We're gonna to have to figure out how we wanna operate as a country. More than 17,000 migrants are currently calling Chicago home and are being housed in places like the O'Hare Airport, police stations, universities, and other temporary shelters. Which leads some Chicago residents to wonder why they aren't helping Chicago's homeless in the same way that they're helping Chicago's migrants. Also, just a side note, a migrant is a person that is here on temporary work. I don't even know if the word migrant is the appropriate term for these Venezuelan folks. ¿Y dónde eres? De Venezuela. Mucha de la gente que están aquí son de Venezuela, ¿sí? La mayoría, sí, señor. ¿Qué está ocurriendo en Venezuela? La situación económica, para la familia no hay nada. ¿Fue difícil encontrar un trabajo en Venezuela? Muy difícil conseguir trabajo en Venezuela. ¿Qué fue tu trabajo antes de la crisis? Construcción. ¿Qué es tu experiencia en América ahora? Tengo un poco de haber llegado, pero es diferente a lo que uno Está acostumbrado a ver, pues. ¿Cuántos días está en aquí. Estados Unidos? Tengo una semana apenas que llegué. ¿Qué quieres ser en tu futuro? Para poder estar aquí legalmente y conseguir un buen trabajo. Y... Señor, ¿quieres compartir tu cuenta? Dígame. Dígame sobre tu viaje aquí. Cuando nos en el tren, pasando la selva. ¿Conoces no, no. la bestia? Claro. La bestia, claro. Lo más peligroso fue Monterrey, Reynosa. Le quitan la cantidad de dinero, te matan. Te quitan los niños. Like el cartel o la policía? No, los carteles. ¿Sientes más tranquilo ahora en los sí. Estados Unidos? Claro, es. ¿Qué disfruta más sobre Estados Unidos? Porque hay seguridad, este es un hay país seguridad, seguro. Claro. ¿Eres con tu familia aquí? Sí, tengo mis dos hijos y mi, y mi mujer. ¿Por qué viajas aquí a Estados Unidos? Yo vengo de Colombia. Colombia. Colombia se está poniendo igual que Venezuela ya. No tenía trabajo, todo se está poniendo caro, no se consigue trabajo. ¿Haces la viaje a la bestia? Sí, claro. ¿Con tu hija? Con mi hija. Tres días viajando en la bestia con mi hija y tres días en la selva del Darién. Con mi hija y mi otro hijo y mi señora. ¿Qué piensas sobre Estados Unidos? Aquí muy bien, gracias a Dios, todo bien. 
Are you a local Chicagoan? I am not. I am from about an hour away. Should we continue to be sanctuary cities or should we say, hey, enough is enough? Well, we should continue to be a sanctuary city and instead of complaining about the symptoms of why we have people coming in and what a strain it is on our systems, our resources, our communication, our transportation, we should help the antecedent issues with it. One, help the people find a way to make their countries better. Help the people yeah. find a way to assimilate in society, not just coming into the larger cities, but also into different parts of the U.S. and even other countries too. The biggest holder of the migrants in the city is just down the street. How is it impacting the city right now? I have some friends who some of the migrants are staying next door to them. Yeah. They're struggling with that a little bit. One day is empty building, the next day there's a community there and they're complaining about the noise, they're co complaining about some of the behavior. Kind of it's a tough situation because you feel sorry for individuals who's trying to make a better life for yeah. themselves. So it's like no one's fault, but then it's not a good situation for anybody. This country has a lot of, has a homeless issue. Now you can build tents and find places for people that wasn't here two weeks ago. What's this issue that you got homelessness in this country yeah. that you can't find money to do? It looks like they're putting them up in like the fancy hotels too. That's what I thought was kind of interesting. It's not like they're putting people in the Super 8 motel. Well, it's not premier. The location is, but it's like what's available. That was a hotel that was empty. So it's like, okay. I know that of the projected city budget, it's supposed to be over 500 million in deficit next yeah. year. A third of it's going to be because of the migrant issue. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be more awareness or protest in Chicago? Because I see some communities that are fiercely against it. For them to just sit up here with this crap and we're supposed to listen to it. I'm the deputy mayor for immigrant, migrant, and refugee oh, rights. These decisions need to be brought to the community. How can you come into a community and dump people in our community? This is not fair. It's going to destroy our business. It's going to destroy our hopes and dreams. Some communities that are fiercely yeah. poor. We should continue to be a sanctuary city. And so guys, I think I misspoke. I looked up Chicago residents happy about the migrant shelter and could only find protest videos. So. Looks like no one actually in the city is happy about it. $500 million, that's a lot. Where was that before? Why is this migrant thing all of a sudden, money is falling out of the tree? Obviously there's a crisis at the border. Yeah. Governor Abbott is shipping about 40 or 50 people from Texas yeah. every single day. How do you feel about Governor Abbott doing that? It's sort of like, come on man, you know what I mean? But then you say, okay, well, I want you to feel the pain that I'm feeling, right? I understand that, but it seems like that he could be He's trying to make it difficult for you versus turning into a more political statement to show you up versus trying to really be helpful. Do you think Chicago should continue to be a sanctuary city, I should say? I think it has to be. I run the Chicago Marathon every year. We talk about, oh, you run through all these different ethnic neighborhoods. So one minute we're saying we're this big international city and then uh, you can't be a big international city and not be welcoming. ¿Qué está ocurriendo en Venezuela ahora? Venezuela es un desastre, ahorita no, no hay empleo. ¿Es la falta de gobierno? Claro. Pues, ¿Piensa que Maduro gana la uh, elección o no? No, no, no. Sí. Ellos son los que llevan el control de todo, de máquinas las controlan ellos. Es la única forma que van a ganar. ¿Qué es tu sueño de un trabajo? De un trabajo estable y estar bien aquí. ¿Tú compras este coche en Estados Unidos? Sí. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Tres mil dólares. Aquí en Estados Unidos tú trabajas y tienes todo. Carro, moto, casa, todo. ¿Cómo peligroso es este barrio? No. Un poco peligroso. ¿Conoces personas que fue robado? Sí, el, robaron. El el fue robaron. Sí, también el robaron. Okay, okay. A un amigo también. Escucho yeah. que fue robado. Se llevaron el catalizador. El carro estaba parado allá frente a la escuela. Se metieron y cortaron. ¿Cómo es tu experiencia en Estados Unidos ahora? Es un país muy bueno, estable. ¿Qué piensas sobre socialistas y comunistas? Socialismo resulta ser como un cáncer. We can't be in here? Oh, I thought some of the guys invited us in. I don't know. Chicago is really cutting down on access here. I get it, I get it. Me gusta tu Jordans. ¿Cuántas semanas está aquí en Estados Unidos? One year, three months. ¿Qué es tu experiencia en Estados Unidos? Una experiencia buena. Hay algunas personas que están enojadas. Ellos dicen, hey, hay personas sin casa que están americanos, hay veterans de guerreros que no reciben reciben dinero o casas y ellos ve hombres de Venezuela reciben cuartos y más y ellos están enojados. 
¿Qué piensas sobre esto? Solo se ve aquí lo superficial, pero por dentro no saben cómo es por dentro. En un cuarto vemos 30, 20 personas. Okay. No y una camilla pequeña. Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola. ¿Qué estás cocinando? Pequeños. Muy rico y sabroso. Rico, sabroso. Disfruta tu vida en Estados Unidos. Sí, trabajando sí. para la familia. Muchas gracias por la comida, muy sabroso. Mm. El señor más guapo en todo de Chicago aquí, ¿eh? Claro. So, ¿Cómo es vida en Chicago? Boo, boo. Más stable y seguro. Sí, ah, seguro. Sí. ¿Cuánto cuesta para un cortar de, de pelo? Un corte, 40, 25. No necesito un car cortar. Un... No, no, aquí, pero aquí sí. No, no. <laughs> Mi esposa dice que es un salva aquí. A Chicago, eh. Para la película, puedes uh, mudar tu booty como esto. <laughs> ¿Conoces twerk? Twerk? Twerking, yes, but no. <laughs> ¿Eres un cocinera? Sí. Para vivir aquí, ¿cuántos okay. dolores por día necesita? 20 la hora, sería bueno. Tiene un buen día, ok. Trez, this has been very interesting to see. I mean, these people are making the best of their situation. They're making do. They're cooking in the park, they're building community, and they're doing the best they can. So, you can't really fault the Venezuelans. We would do the same exact thing in their shoes. And literally, everyone we've talked to, all they want to do is be able to work. That's all anyone ever said. No one said, I want a Lamborghini, I want a mansion. Let's continue this journey. Well, Chicago welcome me. How much is this ticket gonna be? No party, no party. $75 ticket. Don't Eso lo paga YouTube. <laughs> And just a block away, we got the migrant crisis happening. What is that like experiencing that in your neighborhood? I believe that the city of Chicago should have did a little bit more for the residents, but it's like there's no order over here. Some people are upset because they're saying, you know what, there's a lot of Americans here that need help. We have some really tough neighborhoods, we have veterans, we have homeless that we're not really taking care of. But hey, brand new people that just got here from Venezuela, put them up in a hotel, put them up here. What are your thoughts on that? I work for the Department of Children and Family Services, and I see the homeless crisis happening in Chicago. I mean, in the winter time we're passing out blankets but not trying to get them to a heated place um i believe that the funds that's been spent for the migrants should have been spent for the residents here stabilize them and then move on to helping others so they say chicago is going to be over half million dollars in debt and a third of that issue is going to be because of the migrant crisis what does that make you think the taxpayers yeah <laughs> one thing i didn't support trump but i did support he wasn't bringing over more to the united states of america should chicago remain a sanctuary city i think that we should remain a sanctuary city under certain terms and laws but not just busing 15,000 people over a day or no place to put them how has the venezuelan crisis impacted your life they're right over there there's hundreds of them how is it impact anybody coming to your house and say with you and you're scared. Yeah. You is that me. what they're doing I'm right here it's cool if you knew me right yeah but you don't know me yeah right? yeah, yeah. So it's kind of awkward yeah do you think chicago should still be a sanctuary city oh it always is a sanctuary city do you want more people to come in they ain't got a problem them coming is you staying without you paying when you see the chicago government handing out tons of money hundreds of millions of dollars to the migrants but then we have our homeless we have our tough neighborhoods we have our veterans what does that make you feel where the money going? Just down the street, there's hundreds of migrants. Across the city, there's thousands of migrants. How has it impacted your life as a Chicago resident? It hasn't affected me, though. I don't have no problem with it, you know? Are you glad that Chicago is a sanctuary city? Yeah. So Governor Abbott from Texas, he's been sending migrants that arrived there. He's been sending 40 or 50 of them at a time in a bus, and now it's built up to thousands of migrants. What is your message if you could talk to Governor Abbott? What you do for others, you should do for everybody. I believe that everybody needs help. The next president runs goes on a platform of closing down our borders. Would doing that make you want to vote for him? No, nah, that would make me vote for him, though. All right, folks, we brought you an inside look to the Chicago migrant crisis. Thank you for watching, and as always, love you. See you next week.
folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You want to watch another? Here. You want to subscribe? Over here. See you next week.